So if you live in an apartment like I did growing up in New York City, um, it's great to have a bird, but you do have to think about the fact that you have nearby neighbors and you probably don't have a lot of space. So some of the smaller species are probably better because they take up less space, they don't need, require as much cage space or as a big a wingspan for their home, and they also, while they'll make noise, they don't scream quite as loudly as some of the bigger birds. Um, they also don't live forever, so if you're not planning to stay in that apartment forever, you don't have to worry about moving uh, a little bird around as much. So sometimes things like budgies or parakeets, cockatiels, um, some of the smaller species are really better for an apartment. What are the things would we consider if we were uh, going to look for a bird for an apartment, Sarah? Uh, I think you mentioned it. The biggest problem is noise. I would say the biggest complaint from apartment tenants if it's their neighbor is, oh my god, the bird won't stop screaming. I can hear it. And it's, it's unfortunately, it's a good way to get yourself in trouble and then maybe land your bird without a home. Right. So I think it's very important to consider noise level, especially if you're looking to get a bird while living in an apartment. Absolutely. So just plan ahead. Realize that birds need a lot of space. They need to be able to stretch out and come out of their cage um, safely and be in an enclosed space where they're not going to get into wires or go out the window. And you just need to plan properly for where you're going to put your bird, um, uh, where the bird can be safe and happy and even get some sunlight, which is tough in a New York City apartment. All things to consider before bringing in a parrot to your home.